I think I probably butchered your name a couple times, so I apologize, Mr. Arensmeyer. Correct. There, okay, I got it. Maybe I got it right from, from the uh, founder and CEO of the Small Biz, Biz, Business Majority. Please, thank you. Well, thank you, Co-Chairs Arambula and Wood and the entire committee. Um, I'm John Arnsmeyer, founder and CEO of Small Business Majority. As a representative of more than 3.8 million small businesses in California, we're pleased to offer testimony today in support of common sense solutions to ensure California's businesses and self-employed entrepreneurs have access to quality, affordable health care. We are a national small business advocacy organization founded 12 years ago in California with three offices in the state and 7,000 small business owners in our network out of 55,000 nationwide. We are founded and run by small business owners to ensure America's entrepreneurs are a key part of a thriving economy. We actively engage small business owners and policymakers in support of policy solutions, and we deliver information and resources to entrepreneurs that provide small business growth and drive a diverse and inclusive job-creating economy. A key part of our work over the past 12 years has been to advocate for policies that help small businesses, their employees, and self-employed entrepreneurs access affordable and comprehensive health coverage and care. Today I'll discuss several proposals we believe are crucial to ensuring and expanding this access. Over the past five years, the ACA has provided health care to 24 million individuals nationwide who otherwise couldn't access coverage, many of whom work for small employers or are themselves business owners or self-employed. In California alone, more than 5 million people have insurance thanks to the new health care law. It's important that this committee and everybody realize how important the ACA actually is to small business and to entrepreneurship in this country and this state. Unfortunately, prior to the law's enactment, small businesses and their employees comprised a disproportionate share of the working uninsured. Indeed, in 2011, nearly two-thirds of the nation's uninsured workers were self-employed or working at a company with fewer than 100 employees. And when they could access health coverage, small businesses paid an average 18 percent more than their larger counterparts, usually for less comprehensive coverage. The, I should point out that the, since the enactment and the implementation of the ACA, the rate of increase in the small group market has dropped. The annual rate of increase has dropped from 10.4 percent to 5.2 percent. Those are national numbers, but the numbers in California are not far off. It should come as no surprise that the scientific opinion polling we've conducted last year found that six in ten small business owners support the ACA despite all of the misrepresentation and partisan noise surrounding its enactment and implementation. The ACA is the first meaningful health care reform to help address these needs and disparities, and it's been particularly important for California's small businesses and self-employed entrepreneurs. In particular, the individual marketplace has been crucial to expanding access to quality, affordable health care for the small business community, with 8.1% 8 or 3 million self-employed Californians, 8.1% um, out of the 3 million self-employed Californians is 370,000 total enrolled on a plan through Covered California in 2015, compared to just 2.9% of all workers. Employees of small businesses totaling 5.1 million in California are also more likely to have benefited from the ACA, with roughly 21% of small business employees gaining coverage in California through both the individual marketplace and the expansion of Medi-Cal. That's 13% in Medi-Cal and 8% in Covered California. These statistics illustrate how California has been the leader in ensuring access to quality, affordable health care thanks to its creation of a robust individual marketplace, easy enrollment in the small group marketplace through Covered California for Small Business, and vigorous marketing and education campaigns. However, as we've heard, national efforts to chip away at the health care law or repeal entirely threaten this progress. Recent proposals to undo key provisions of the ACA through legislation and executive action threaten to disrupt the marketplaces and in turn harm small business owners, their employees, and self-employed individuals. While we believe certain provisions of the ACA can and should be improved, Undermining the ACA eradicates hard-won benefits for America's entrepreneurs, potentially causing a rapid rise in health care costs and creating tremendous economic instability. California small businesses look forward to the day when one's employment and income status don't govern access to quality, affordable health care. But in the short term, California can and must take immediate steps 
to protect its citizens and its small business community by enacting practical, achievable reforms that will strengthen California's marketplaces and prevent huge increases in health care costs while potentially laying the groundwork to achieve the long-term goal of universal coverage. Today, I'll focus on three key areas, market stability, expanded access to coverage, and cost and affordability. First and foremost, steps must be taken to improve the stability of the individual marketplace, especially in light of the federal repeal of the individual mandate penalty. A strong individual marketplace is vitally important for owners and employees of small businesses that aren't able to offer group coverage. That's half, over half of all small businesses, and especially for the roughly 3 million solo entrepreneurs in California who have had, had no other access to uh, coverage before the ACA. The ability of self-employed individuals and entrepreneurs to purchase affordable health insurance promotes a ro robust small business economy by reducing job lock, allowing workers who previously felt tied to their job by their large employer benefits package to strike out on their own entrepreneurial path or join thriving small businesses. This is why California must pursue innovative state solutions to encourage younger and healthier individuals to stay in the system, which is necessary to ensure a robust, competitive, and affordable marketplace. California has already worked to stabilize rates despite uncertainty regarding federal cost-sharing subsidies, and we encourage the state to continue to find creative solutions to stabilize individual marketplace. As such, we have a list of recommendations that would help ensure a healthy and thriving marketplace for California's entrepreneurs and small business employees. First, we encourage lawmakers to pursue legislation that would require all Californians to participate in the health insurance risk pool. It's absolutely critical that California reinstate an individual mandate um, or an equivalent provision to ensure a stable and healthy marketplace for California's entrepreneurs. By encouraging young, healthy people to join and remain in the system, we can also promote affordability for everyone. We also caution against allowing so-called junk insurance plans that don't conform to the ACA. These plans would weaken the larger individual market while failing to provide adequate coverage. Specifically, we encourage all of you and your colleagues to support legislation like SB 910, which would prohibit insurers from offering short-term, limited-duration insurance plans and in so doing help to protect consumers from plans that fail to provide adequate coverage. To protect the robustness of the small group market, California should continue to prevent businesses from forming association health plans, including retaining the current ban on new multiple employer welfare arrangements or MIWAs. While AHPs and MIWAs might no doubt offer plans with lower costs for some small businesses, they largely benefit entities with larger, healthier employees. This creates separate risk pools, um, creating um, a problem when you leave other uh, employers in the core small group market. We can't have bifurcated, balkanized markets. We have to have a, a robust, large enough market that everybody's participating in. AHPs also often don't cover essential health benefits and aren't governed by rules preventing insurers from charging more based on traits such as gender or having a pre-existing condition. California is already a leader in preventing abuses from these types of plans, and we hope the state will continue to push back against national efforts that would undermine our state protections. Second issue is access to coverage. In order to to have stable health care marketplaces, it's critical that small business owners, employees, and self-employed entrepreneurs have access to quality, affordable health care. California has done an impressive job of promoting its health care options by providing online enrollment and communicating the marketplace's benefits through education and outreach. Here in California, our team at Small Business Majority has conducted more than 500 workshops for small businesses across the state, reaching nearly 20,000 Californians directly through our health care events and more than 200,000 overall through our free healthcare resources for California small businesses. Based upon our extensive work on the ground, educating our state small businesses and listening to their needs, we recommend the following actions to further expand access to affordable coverage. The first and most important is Medi-Cal. Expanding Medi-Cal under the ACA has played a crucial role in reducing California's uninsured rate, especially for small business employees and the self-employed. For example, a recent study found that 13.3 percent of self-employed Californians and 52 percent of small business employees gained coverage thanks to Medi-Cal expansion. Roughly one quarter 
of California's self-employed population was insured through Medi-Cal in 2015. I want to repeat, one quarter of California's self-insured population insured through Medi-Cal. While more than one-third of Californians working at companies with 10 or fewer employees, that's almost 100,000 employers, were enrolled in the same, employees, excuse me, were enrolled in the same year. Yet 2.9 million Californians still don't have insurance. Of those who are uninsured, 1.8 are employed, with 44% of them working at a company with fewer than 50 employees, while one in six are self-employed. One in three of those without insurance in California have annual incomes below $25,000, meaning they are likely eligible for Medi-Cal. Further expanding Medi-Cal and continuing to educate Californians about its benefits would help low-income, small business employees, and self-employed individuals obtain coverage. Additionally, we encourage the legislature to expand Medi-Cal to include undocumented Californians. Extending this coverage would drastically decrease the number of remaining uninsured in the state as roughly 1.8 million undocumented Californians are without health care coverage, more than half of the total uninsured. These people, many of whom run or work in small businesses, are accessing our health care system in an inefficient manner without any way to pay for their care, thereby adding to the instability of the system and increasing health care costs for everyone else. And lastly, there's the all-important issue of cost and affordability. California's legislators must, must pursue additional policies and improve cost and affordability for Californians. Our scientific polling has shown that small business owners are deeply concerned with the cost of prescription drug coverage and that these rising costs are hurting their bottom line. As a result, they're strongly supportive of a number of policies that aim to bring drug costs down. And additionally, our polling shows 85% of small businesses support the ability of government to negotiate drug prices. We encourage lawmakers to consider proposals like AB 587 to allow pooled purchasing power for prescription drugs. California's lawmakers can further, prom further promote affordability by enacting policies that require health plans to spend more on health care and less on administrative costs and profits. One option is to codify a medical loss ratio in into California law to reinforce the state's commitment to affordability. Locking into an 80-20 ratio in case federal law loosens this requirement would be a good first step. We encourage further research to determine if a higher ratio is economically feasible. Obviously, we have to have a system under the current system where insurance can be offered by private insurers, so um, we don't want a ratio that's going to make that un uh, sustainable, but I think we can look at maybe doing better than the 80-20 rule. Another example would be to consider a public option to allow Medi-Cal to compete with private health insurers in the open market. Consumers would have the choice to buy into these programs at their own cost, which would increase competition, provide more coverage options, and help lower costs. Additionally, this type of public plan would ensure that all areas of the state have access to competitive coverage. Additional options include making plans more affordable by, by providing additional financial assistance to Californians who are purchasing subsidized plans through Covered California, specifically by increasing co-payments or cost-sharing measures to those who qualify for federal ACA subsidies. California can also promote affordability by working to keep premiums down for all individuals. As Anthony mentioned, fixing the so-called family glitch is also a way to ensure more Californians have access to affordable coverage. This is particularly important for employees of small businesses, many of whom can't afford to provide coverage to dependents. We encourage the state legislature to consider providing a state subsidy for spouses and dependents who are currently unable to receive a subsidy through Cal Cover California due to the fact that the primary insured family member meets the employee affordability standard under the law. Finally, we encourage lawmakers to support legislation like SB 538, the Health Care Market Fairness Act, a bill introduced in the previous legislative session to promote hospital contracting reform to drive down costs. Empirical evidence shows that the provider consolidation and unfair contracting are a key driver of increases in health care costs, and the bill addresses some of the most coercive practices by providers that have no relation to value and serve only to fuel unjustifiable increases in price. In sum, the Affordable Care Act has led to significant gains for all Californians, and particularly to small business employees, um, em employers, employees, and self-employed. Thanks in no small part to the proactive attitude California has taken to establishing a robust marketplace that has made it easy for individuals and small employers to access affordable coverage. To continue this progress, California lawmakers should consider additional common sense solutions to improve market stability, expand coverage, and make health care more, even more affordable. This can all be done in parallel with considering the many uh, suggestions for long-term universal care, including single-payer, and we encourage the legislator to, work, the legislator to work on both tracks at the same time. 
Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this important issue. Look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much. Um, questions? What do you all think about trying to bring back an individual mandate to California? I noticed that was not mentioned in any of the proposals so far. I'm just. Well, I think so. well, I, I'm, actually, I think I. I oh, I, I think you did. And, yeah, and you did allude to it. I mean, absolutely. I think we've seen uh, that markets are most stable and costs spread out are minimized, uh, you know, cost increases are minimized the most when you have more people in the system. So uh, whatever legal um, way it can be done to ensure that you're getting everyone in the system, and we all know a mandate and a penalty doesn't ensure everybody is in the system, even those who are, are eligible. But, um, you know, there's no, it's, it's an additional tool in the arsenal. And um, obviously we need to wait to see what's going to happen nationwide with the mandate being pulled back. But absolutely, to the extent that that, um, that requirement can be in place and can have some impact on people joining the system, particularly younger and healthier people, uh, we think that helps bring down costs and stabilize markets. Why would we discard what we've done, which is 92.4% coverage, rather than focus on solving some of the key problems that we know maybe we could get a handle on if we did that? rather than starting a whole new system, trying to go and get these waivers with an administration that is clearly not going to be favorable to California, that could take years, that maybe leave folks kind of, you know, needing care and not getting it. It's just an open question. Can, is that not doable? Uh, Someone remember, I would agree that um, the first thing we need to do is fix what we can fix and shore up the ACA. That we've made tremendous gains with the ACA. I also agree with Anthony that um, a robust and functioning system based upon the ACA is going to be that much closer to a more comprehensive universal system. I don't think by working on that we're moving away from a long-term solution. I mean, as somebody who represents small business owners, it's a, it is a crazy quilt system. I'm well, you know, first of all, small business owners have to take the time to figure out, you know, to learn about it. Well, am I going to offer? Am I not going to offer? Now, if they don't offer, then their employees, you know, have the choice of going to the individual exchange uh, or maybe they're eligible for Medi-Cal. I mean, that doesn't mean we shouldn't promote all of that because those are all options that didn't exist before. But I do think that um, by doing that, we solve, no, we do our best to solve those problems, and then we also put ourselves in a position to simultaneously, you know, work on potential long-term solutions which do have financial and legal consequences that aren't going to be fixed immediately. So I don't think it's one versus the other. And want to focus, if I can, on three main areas. First, I'd like better information, if I can, from the small business owners as well as health access regarding the family glitch. How could we better meet the needs of our families, and what could we do to improve upon that? Second, I wanted to ask about the medical loss ratios that was brought up, both in terms of stabilizing and opportunities for us to look at increases, and by, if you could further extrapolate what raising this amount would do for us as Californians and how that would help us. And finally, I'd like to ask about the underinsured. That's an area that really touches home to me. When you brought up the fact that $12 an hour is going towards health care, I'm reminded that there are many people in my district who don't make $12 an hour and want to figure out what we could do as a state to help in paying for those premiums and cost sharings, what opportunities we had to help the middle class within our state to realize the successes. Um, I'll, I'll take a couple of these, um, but not, not all of them. So um, the, the family glitch, I mean, it, and as I said, that particularly hurts small businesses that tend to have plans that are employee only when they do have plans that are more, more often employee only than larger organizations and businesses that have plans that often include dependents. Um, I'm not sure, I would defer to experts here, I'm not sure that, um, it, in other words, I think that federal we can't increase the federal subsidies on our own, you know, to, to cover dependents of um, who are related to employees that have plans where they meet the affordability standard. So I think it would require funding, 
I mean, uh, let's be clear. And so, and that's a decision all you need to make with the surplus that exists of, you know, there's a million places where that money can go. Um, it is a huge problem for um, employees of small businesses that uh, have dependents where the businesses have struggled to offer the plans but still want to offer it but can't afford to offer dependent coverage. So I wanted to point that out. As far as MLR is concerned, I mean, we just want to make sure that there's some standard in place. And, you know, what, there, were two, there were two more proposals today in Washington for eviscerating this out or the other. So um, I just want to, you know, I think it, I just wanted to point out that it's important that um, if there's a need to have a, a legal backstop in case Washington does some more crazy stuff, uh, we should have that. I want to make one point on immigrants. Um, as many of you know, immigrants are twice as likely as the general population to, smart and, to start and run small businesses. So when you talk about um, immigrants, and obviously it's both documented and undocumented, you talk about immigrants, there's a huge crossover with small business in, in many parts of this state. You, you, when you look at the small business community, it's predominantly immigrants. And so um, to, to, to promote and continue to promote entrepreneurship in this state, um, we have to deal with the medical needs of immigrants, both documented and undocumented. Thank you, ma'am.